السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, in today's session of part three uh, of Principles of Religion, we are going to talk about a new praiseworthy character trait that help us, it helps us have a purified and sound heart, which we all need on the day of judgment when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand before him. Our topic today is contentment with divine decree. Al-rida bi qada'illahi wa qadrih. So what's contentment with the divine decree? It is to be pleased with Allah's decision. It's to submit to the divine decree and strive to actualize a state of total contentment. Whoever recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that whatever befalls us has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 1, 55, 6, and 7. And we will surely test you. So we are in this dunya to be tested. So what is the test? We will test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, loss of lives, loss of fruits, but give good tidings to who? To the patient, to those who practice patience. Who are those? الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون those who, when disaster strikes them, they say, indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed, to him we will return. What's the reward? Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. So there will be blessings, there will be mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those, those upon this group who practice patience, who, who accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's those who are the rightly guided. So in Surah Al-Insan, Ayah 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا And will reward them for what they patiently endured, a garden in paradise and sell garments. They accepted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested them with. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, عِظَمُ الْجَزَاءِ مَعَ عِظَمِ الْبَلَاءِ So, the, the greatest reward comes with the greatest trial. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا ابْتَلَاهُمْ When Allah loves a group of people, He tests them. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever accepts, whoever submits to Allah's decree, 
What will happen? فله الرضا. So then whoever uh, uh, accepts uh, then he, he will win the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will win the pleasure. فله الرضا. ومن سخط فله السخط. But whoever is discontent with that, with whatever Allah had tested them with, then they will earn his wrath. With Rida, there is tranquility. How? The believer, the true believer knows that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 51, Say, never will be struck, we will be struck, except by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. So they have true belief, complete belief that whatever befalls them. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. Now, we ask the question, what or what, why and what makes a Muslim practice rida? Why it is possible for the believer to be pleased with Allah's decision? Why? Will everyone accept Allah's tests? Will everyone submit to Allah's decisions? When believers feel difficulty, what do they do? They dislike it. It's it, they, they, they dislike it. Naturally, everyone disliked the dislike difficulties. But what would the believers do? Their intellect informs them of a great results. What is that? If they accept this difficulty, if they submit to this difficulty, to Allah's uh, decision, then the reward in the hereafter will be great. So that, that thinking will make them accept this difficulty happily. There is no criticism. There is no why to Allah. There is no why me. Why this happened to me? No. We just say, Alhamdulillah. And we say, Alhamdulillah, when something good happens to us, or when something bad happens to us. When something good happens to us, we have to say, thank you, Ya Allah, Alhamdulillah, because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala in shakartum la If you thank, then I will increase you in bounties. But how would someone who had a, a, a calamity just say the word Alhamdulillah immediately? This is Let's take for example, someone had a car accident and he broke his leg. Alhamdulillah, it's one leg, it's not two, both, both of my legs. So he is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of difficulties. How would this happen when the heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then automatically the heart will say, Alhamdulillah. Now let's take the following example. Uh, a doctor gives a patient a bitter medicine to swallow or encourages him to take an injection. Swallowing bitter medication or taking uh, an injection 
causes discomfort, it causes pain. Nonetheless, since the patient is aware of its beneficial effects, that will lead to good health. So this is the, the beneficial effect of that medicine or injection. Then he will be pleased with the doctor. And actually, he will feel obligated to him and even he will appreciate him. So what are the reasons for having Rito? Why would someone have Rito? The first, the first reason is we have Rito for the sake of Allah. We all know that Rida is, high, is a higher maqam than patience. Practicing Rida is higher than practicing patience. With, with Rida, there is, there is Sakina. With patience, there is sorrow. So if the reward of being, uh, uh, of practicing patience is lots of goodness and khair. Then the reward of Rida is much higher than that. So whatever befalls us is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that befalls us is uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to practice patience. We have, we have to practice rida. Because for those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will, what will do? He will, he will have goodness for them. So everything that befalls us is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever he decrees will happen. So we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of hardship and in times of ease. And one of the uh, people of Allah said, كُنْ مَعَ اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَكُنْ مَعَكَ فِي الشِدَّةِ be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease, then he will be with you during times of calamities. He will help you practice rida. He will help you submit to his decisions. So what else helps uh, to practice rida? Dhikrullah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also being in company of those people who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you sit with, with them, then they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they speak, then they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have a calamity that befalls you, those people of Allah will help you, will help you during that time. Another way of helping you uh, to have rida, to practice rida, to submit to Allah's decisions is reciting the Quran. When you recite Quran, you feel there is a special tranquility in your heart. So whenever you have a calamity, it makes you uh, saddened, it makes you agitated, it makes you uncomfortable. Read Quran. When you read the Quran, then you will read about the stories of people, of all, uh, of people who, who who were who lived way back, 
and you will you will have wisdom from their stories when you read the quran you will read about the prophets about the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will read how difficult their their lives were where but you will also read about their rida with the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will make your calamities, your problem easy if you compare it with those of the uh, prophets. Also, what makes you practice uh, rida is that uh, the the great blessings the high reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those people who submit to Allah's decree so the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they fully understand the reward of rida that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his righteous people. A pious woman once slipped and uh, her toenail fell out. She began smiling and people asked her, are you not feeling pain? What was her reply? She said, the enjoyment of the reward I will receive has removed from my heart the bitterness of its pain. MashaAllah, look at this yaqeen, look at this complete, complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She knows that there will be reward. And that reward cleared her heart. So she's not feeling the bitterness of pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent revelation to Dawood alayhi salam. He said to him, O oh Dawood, you intend and I, I intend. Only that will occur which I intend. If you happily accept that which I intend, then I will be sufficient for you in that which you intend. But if you are not pleased with that which I intend, then I will tire you. I will tire you in that which you intend. And then too, only that which I intend will come to pass. Subhanallah. So whatever, whatever is happening in this, let's say, temporary world, temporary life, which is regarded to be as cause of worry, concern, and anguish by who? By an ignorant person. So... Whatever this uh, uh, this happens, whatever how this is viewed, is seen in a different light, from a different angle by people of understanding. So the surprise of this person is like the surprise shown by Prophet Musa alayhi, alayhi salam to Al Khadr. After we all know the story that Al Khadr, Musa, Sayyid Musa, wanted to learn from Al Khadr, so he stayed in his company. And this is explained in Surah Al Kahf. And we had three incidents that happened. So while sitting in a boat for poor people al khadr alayhi salam damaged the boat by removing a few boards from it sayyidna musa alayhi salam 
in surprise, asked him why he committed, why he committed such an act of excess. Thereafter, Al Khadr alayhi salam killed an immature youngster. And again, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in astonishment objected that since when had the blood of an innocent youngster become permissible? This was the second story. But the third, so continuing ahead, they reached a certain area where the inhabitants did not even care to host them. In the morning, while whilst leaving the area, uh, their gaze fell on a wall which was about to collapse. Al Khadr alayhi salam referred to this wall. Again, what happened? Musa alayhi salam was taken aback, objecting that he should not have favored such unfriendly community. So they did not care uh, the least bit about their guests. And after this third objection, the two of them were to part in accordance to their agreement. So it's clear that the only reason Musa alayhi salam was surprised to these incidents was that he was not aware of the underlying secrets of the underlying wisdom of these incidents. But Al Khadr alayhi salam informed Musa those secrets. So he said to him, the, the, the boat belonged to some poor sailors. And the king at that time was unjustly lips that were in an excellent condition. Thus he damaged the ship. So that these poor people's only means of income would not be taken away by that, by that unjust king. Then he told him about the child whom he killed was uh, naturally a religious. And there was a strong fear that an, uh, on reaching adulthood, he would lead astray his believing parents since they were not able to resist his demands uh, due to, to their parental love for him, for him. So this child was taken uh, uh, was killed by Al Khadr alayhi salam, and another child was bestowed up uh, uh, to them, and uh, he was pious and he was a cause for uh, the success of the parents in this life and in the hereafter. So, another explanation, another secret that was revealed to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Then Al Khadr anhu continued, as for the wall, it belonged to two orphans whose father was pious, and underneath, underneath this wall was buried his wealth. So this wealth was left by the father for these two children. So he Al Khadr alayhi salam straightened the wall so that these two children could retrieve the wealth after attaining maturity. But if the wall, if the if the wall had to fall now, the wealth would have been exposed and would be taken by people. So after these explanations, the amazement of Musa alayhi salam was eradicated. So whatever happens to us has khair for us. Even if outwardly it does not show any khair to our understanding. 
there is always khair in whatever happens to us. And we should always have rida with Allah's decree. We should always say, al khiratu fi Allah. Goodness is in that which Allah ordained. There is an incident, a story uh, mentioned of a pious man who would always utter in every problem, he would say, goodness in it, it, goodness is in that which Allah ordained. Al khiratu fi Allah. He used to uh, he used to reside in a village and he possessed a donkey on which he would load his goods. He also had a dog that would guard his house and a cock that would wake him up in the morning. One day, a fox came and grabbed the cock, taking it away. So the fox killed the cock. When he saw his wife saddened, they don't have the cock anymore, he said to her, goodness is in that which Allah ordained. Al khiratu fi Allah. She looked at him with surprise. Later on, a wolf came and killed the donkey. Again, he said these words to counsel, to counsel his wife who was saddened because they lost the, the, the donkey. Shortly after that, the dog fell sick and died. Once again, what was the... Uh, the phrase, the statement of the uh, of the husband, al khiratu fi Allah. Goodness is in that which Allah ordained. His wife was astonished. She was surprised. There was no such of loss that there must be goodness in these actions in whatever happens. So one morning, they woke up to find that all the houses around them had been attacked by, by attacked the night before, and all the people were imprisoned. They were captured. The children were made slaves, and the soldiers had recognized the houses in the darkness of the night by the bring of the people's donkeys, the barking of their dogs, and the crowing of their cocks. The pious man then said to his wife, you have seen now that goodness is in what Allah has ordained. The animals of the people, of the neighbors, were the cause of their problems. If our animals had not died before this, then you and I would have also been taken away as prisoners. So whether we understand the reality, whether we understand the secrets, whether we understand the reasons behind each action that happens to us, or we do not understand it. We have to have complete rida with Allah's decree. We have to say al-khirat fi Allah. Once a messenger of Allah was worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, the cavern of a mountain. Nearby, there was a stream flowing. One time, a person riding a horse came to this stream. He removed his money belt and placed it on the ground before drinking water. When he quenched his uh, thirst, he went away, forgetting his belt, in which there was 1,000 dinars, or uh, this was the gold coins at that time. 
After a short while, another person came and he took this belt away. Later, a poor man came by, carrying a bundle of wood on his back. He removed this bundle of, from, from his back and sat down to drink and rest. So the horseman in, uh, returned very agitated, very nervous, uh, looking uh, for his money belt. When he saw the poor man, he caught hold of him and started beating him, asking for his belt. When the poor man denied, den he, he denied any knowledge of the belt, so the horseman uh, brandished his sword and killed the poor man. Now, who is watching all of this? The messenger of Allah in the cave. So this messenger of Allah who has witnessed the whole incident, he remarked, Oh Allah, this incident was most amazing. This poor man did not take the belt of money, but he was killed for it. While the other oppressor who stole the belt was not taken to task. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal to this, to this messenger of his? He said, remain engaged in your worship, knowing the mysteries behind divine workings is not your work. But anyway, Allah now is telling the reality, the secret of what happened. So he said, the reality of this matter is that this poor person had killed the father of the horseman. I thus allowed retribution, allowed the revenge to take place by the son of the murdered person. The horseman's father had once stolen 1,000 gold coins from the person who took the belt money. Thus, I returned it from his estate. Subhanallah. The conclusion of all these stories we just mentioned is that whoever believes in wisdoms and deeper secrets will not be in the least bit surprised at the action of subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he will be surprised at his own ignorance and foolishness. He will not question the divine decisions by using the words like why, how, why me? But rather, he would be pleased with the decisions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined. So, the true believer should accept the divine decisions, Allah's decree. He should never complain. This is the true belief in destiny. In fact, it's uh, such a beautiful remedy that it shortens the duration of sorrows. Believing completely in destiny, in the orders, in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shortens the duration of sorrows. In this dunya, as we mentioned, there are tests, one after the other, one after the other. There is sadness. But it does not reach the level of distress. The trouble does not grieve a believer. While experiencing the pain and suffering, the believer does not carry that pain in constant sorrow or restlessness. Yes, there is sorrow. 
there is pain and even tears flow from the believer's eyes due to the difficulty but his heart does not express displeasure with Allah's decree. He does not complain. He does not criticize. He does not express objections. He does not say, if only I had done this, then it would not have happened this way. A believer does not engage in such thoughts. Instead, what does he say? Qadarullahi madam. Allah has decreed what he willed. I am an ignorant, insignificant person. How can I know that uh, what is best for me and what is not? Allah only is the all-wise, the all-knowing, he knows better than me. Even when we want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make lots of dua. Ya Allah, make this happen. Ya Allah, facilitate this. Ya Allah, make this easy. And when it happens, then a person might say, oh my God, I wish this never happened. So we don't know. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is khair in something, Ya Allah, please make it happen. If there isn't khair, I don't know. You, we, we don't know. And this is why we do dua al-istikhara. Ya Allah, we don't know. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an says, we are fleeing to Allah's decree by Allah's decree. The essence of these words of wisdom is that it does not mean that we should not take measures. No, not at all. Take measures. But if even after taking all the necessary precautions, something happens against your wishes, then understand that there was goodness in it. So be content with it. We have to take measures. Surely we have to. It's indeed a command to take to take measures. For example, you are treating an illness. You are closing the door of your house. You are locking your car, taking complete care of your belongings, taking good care of your parents, taking good care of your children, ensuring the protection of your life, wealth, honor. But even after all these measures, if a loss still occurs, then understand that it was distant, it was decided to happen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it happened for a reason. We might not understand the reason. Don't say if I had if I had done it differently, it would have been different. If you say so. Then the night of grief will become lengthy. The time of sorrow will prolong. While being content with Allah's decree, make the loss easier. You are accepting Allah's decree. Then Allah will send you divine help to ease your loss. When the son of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Tears were seen in flowing from Sayyidina Muhammad's eyes. He held the child in his arms. So Sayyidina Muhammad was asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are these tears flowing from your eyes? He replied, Yes, these are tears of love, tears of affection. He said, إِنَّ الْعَيْنَ لَتَدْمَعُ وَالْقَلْبَ لَيَحْزَنُ وَلَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِي رَبَّنَا وَإِنَّا بِفِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَمَحْزُنُونَ These, the, the, the eyes are shedding tears and the heart is grieved. And we will not say except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh, Ibrahim, indeed we are grieved by your departure. 
So, in fact, feeling the grief of separation from a child is not contrary to being content with Allah's destiny. However, voicing complaints, griefness, and saying, if, if only it had been this way or that way, can lead to being deprived from uh, uh, reward and blessings. So don't say these words. They will go away with your reward. When we lose a loved one, we should immediately say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allahumma jurni fi musibati wa khlufli khayran minha. We are from Allah and unto him we, we return. O oh Allah, take me out of my plate and bring to me after it something better. This indicates that we are saddened to lose this loved person of, uh, to our heart, but at the same time, we are completely accepting Allah's decree. So, in short, actually, the actual meaning of Rita is that a person should not object to any condition which overcomes him inwardly or outwardly, verbally or in the heart. Practicing Rida is a very high maqal. And not everyone can do that unless he has a good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless he is a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows his order, abstain from all, all that he for, uh, that, that, that he forbade, follows the footstep of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, accept in uh, all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed will, will be of the group about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah is being pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah and that is a the great achievement. So let's, let's focus our heart. Let's focus on our heart. Let's all practice rida deep from our heart so that we will be of the group whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us on the day of judgment. Practicing Krida and gaining the high reward, the great reward on the day of judgment. Until we meet next time, inshallah, I send my salam. And your salam to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.